What's up, all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McBee here. And you are watching and listening to Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast, episode number 158. I am joined today by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the gray, the gold, the brown, I don't know. I am Wildfire One, everyone. Grizzly said, this is Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. I had called Grizzly. I saw a movie that really took me back. And it's a recent movie that uh, that came out, I want to say, during the... I've heard about it mid-COVID. I heard about it mid-COVID that it was coming out. And we're talking about Free Guy. And I called Grizzly. I was like, hey, man, you got to watch this. It's actually really good. It gives me a lot of... Oh, shit. Short Circuit. Thank you. Short Circuit vibes. And I, I, I just fucking... I loved Short Circuit as a kid. And it really brought me back when I watched it. And we'll get into why uh, here soon. But Grizzly's like, okay. And he's in the middle of watching... Uh, what were, you, what were you watching? Arcane or something like that? Yeah, Arcane on Netflix. Yeah, and it's it's based off of League of Legends. And these guys, him and uh, Grizz and, and Dread tried to get me into League of Legends. And unfortunately, I just... Ah. I think it's... What's it called? It's called like a tower defense game, I believe. Right? In a sense, yeah. So I just couldn't get into it. Um, I probably liked it as much as I did. And no offense to people who love this game. It's League of Legends is a big game for a reason. Uh, anyway, my point is, is I got we, maybe we'll do some a podcast on uh, Arcane in the future. Grizz is telling me a lot of good things about it, but we're here to talk about Free Guy. And uh, so, Grizz, what was your first like when I told you, hey, watch this movie? It's got Ryan Reynolds in it. What was your first thought? Oh, Ryan Reynolds, huh? I'm in. <laughs> Right, look, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, I love you, but, like, you're probably the only man I'd turn gay for. I'm joking. I can't. I, I, I love the vagina wearing too much. But, like, Ryan Reynolds is a very, very... <laughs> Grizz is laughing. Ryan Reynolds is a very attractive human being. The movie had me at Ryan Reynolds. He's a great actor. He's a great... He seems like a really good person. Why is my phone ringing? I'm kind of in the middle of a podcast, dude. Yellow? Yellow? I would figured you'd be done with the podcast by now. We literally just started. We have we are oh, five what? minutes into it. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Where are you? I thought, I thought, huh? Where are you? Oh, I, I got off of work not too long ago. Ah, I see. Which, by the way, I got you on speaker. We are recording you. Oh, shit. Um, I may or may not use this. Just to be funny, but oh. we'll see. Anyway, um, oh, was, what's that? I was just gonna see if you wanted to play. I thought you guys have been done already. Oh no, we just barely started, dude. I had to eat some dinner, yes. and then uh, we're now talking about free guy. Food guy. Free guy. Free guy. Oh, I haven't seen that movie. Oh well, then it's probably a good movie. It, it's on Disney Plus. If you got it, watch it. Yeah, I just bought Elden Ring. All right, you guys have a wonderful night. All right, later, brother. Before we were so rudely interrupted, back to the topic. I got you into Free Guy. You watched Free Guy. What was your first thought? My first thought and kind of feel for the movie was it was like you had told me. It's, it's like a GTA Five kind of thing. And for those of you that haven't seen it, um, Ryan Reynolds plays an NPC by the name of Blue Shirt Guy. Or just guy. You know, if you've played GTA enough, you'll know that like the most picked on characters are the NPCs, and they they really they really take that that premise and run with it in this. So, and it's like a normal day for them. That's their world, just being picked on. And and you know, in his case, he's a he's a bank teller. Every day, the the bank gets fucking heisted and hit. And I, I just just imagine how that would be. And his best friend is like the security guard. It's a it's a really good concept. I, when I first heard about it, when I first heard that they uh, talked about making this, I thought it was going to be really good. And I think everyone thought the same thing. Oh, GTA Five. And he works in a place called like Free City or something like that. What it is is like it's his life as an NPC. Um, and then it in a way kind of cuts to a different storyline but along the same timeline it cuts to this guy who works for total douchebag who stole his coding and put it into the game oh him and his 
lady friends coding yeah and his his partner yeah what the guy didn't realize when he stole the code was that the code was meant to learn from itself yeah the code was meant it to would, evolve it was meant to um yeah. it was meant to make a, what, what's called what they call the true ai i robot yeah and i like i robot you know it, it it kind of it did kind of work with most of the characters. It did kind of work with most of the NPCs. It just worked more with one in particular who's played by Ryan Reynolds. At one point that the 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 NPCs were kind of going on their daily lives, but they were doing other things, like the chick that was a barista. Uh, she was writing poetry and stuff, which wasn't added in. You remember they talked about that later on. So they were kind yeah. of they were kind of already self-aware already doing things that they weren't supposed to do but you're right the one point that one particular point we'll get to that in the story uh is where everything just changes and it's really cool and like i told grizz it it really brings me back to the days of of short circuit where a robot basically becomes sentient which that's a whole different movie and i'm sure you guys if you're watching this you probably know what short circuit is if not go watch it guys because this movie reminds me so much of that. Each NPC within this game was programmed a certain way, given certain characteristics, certain traits. Walk this way to work, do this, do that. Like NPCs are. Yeah. Well, with guys, Ryan Reynolds' characters character um the guy that coded him was the guy one of one of the two that coded the main code for the game that was stolen by dickhead that put it into this other game put it into free city yeah but with the coding that he gave Ryan Reynolds character gave him this vision that one day he would meet perfect woman the perfect woman for him yeah and he gave him all these feelings about this woman that were based off of his feelings which that hit me his. right here when when it got to that point and yeah. he explained it like I got, I don't know if I got teary eyed, but I was like, oh, oh, you know, um, and it's how he explained it. Gave him these feelings that he had for his partner. Well, the way that Guy, Ryan Reynolds' character, became aware, became sentient, as it were, is he saw his creator's partner an NPC form not NPC in character form in the game player in the game and she said something that triggered his his memories she was humming a Mariah Carey song and he was just instantly like wait what mm -hmm. I need to talk to this girl they referred they referred to like the player characters you know as glasses people because they always wore glasses sunglasses. so yeah yeah sunglass people and uh that was really interesting and the whole time he's like i gotta brian reynolds is like i gotta talk to her i gotta talk to her and his, his security guard buddy's like no we don't talk to the sunglass people we don't talk to them and it, it's funny because every scene that you see those that they're in especially in the beginning you just see like hectic shit going on in the background shit's on people are on fire there's a, you always see that that noob that's running into the wall like and just jumping for no reason like and, and they did a really good job in bringing out what that world would look like to me i kind of got that player um ready player one ready vibe. player one yes i that's another thing i i kind of there was a lot of pop uh culture, culture. in this show yes a lot of pop culture in this like i saw i think at one point i saw a Mega Man Blaster being used. We definitely saw some Disney influence. I'll put it that way. There's uh, there's some scenes there that you're just going to want to stand up and applaud and laugh and, and chuckle. Uh, 
And that, that's where I agree with you when it comes to, like, Ready Player One being a thing. Uh, so Guy finally kind of shows up where she's at. And she's like, how did you even find me? Aren't you supposed to be, like, an NPC? He goes, well, I don't know what the hell that is, but I followed you. Oh, he got the glasses first, though, didn't he? It's like a little bit after but, he, the same day he talked to her. Or tried to talk to her and got got hit by a train. (laughs) Got hit by a train. Got hit by a train. And then it goes, like, to him going, I guess, being at work. And they got got robbed, right? Yeah. And he decided, because there was, like, something in his head saying, be the hero. So he just kind of got up and took the sunglasses from the player who ended up being like an eight or nine year old girl? <laughs> She's like, "What the hell's going on?" And her friend's like, "Blast him! Just shoot him! Waste him already!" Takes the sun, takes the glasses, puts them on, and is like, "We put them on whenever he gets outside." Yeah, basically sees the heads up display that we see when we play video games. Oh, like VR, yeah, in particular. Yeah, it was a lot like VR in this case. But he saw like he saw like the hell like the things that I would imagine the NPCs wouldn't see like. The health health meters and the, 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 the things that pick up to get money and in the garages and stuff like that. It, it, it's really cool how they implemented that, to be honest with you. Um, One thing that I liked was the GTA V um, money. When you walked up on the, the dude that just got shot and there's like money just kind of floating right above. Oh, him, yeah. Him, yeah. And he picks him up. Because he was wanting to buy those shoes. Those, yep. And he, could never afford them. And then all, he, like, always had $185, like, 76 cents. Yeah, he was just a little bit shy, right, of being able to buy it. The shoes were $200. Every day, he just never had enough. They are like Nikes, weren't and, they? Or, like, they look like Nikes. Yeah. And he picks up that money and goes and to his account and all of a sudden there's like three grand there and he's yeah. like oh, I'm getting <laughs> first thing he did was get those shoes and then you know fast forward a little bit to the point where you were talking about where he finally gets the nerve to talk to the girl and she's like you're level one like what what are you going to do like and he's like she's like well you're going to have to do what all these other guys do and, and she's talking to him like a player she just and they, they assume that she they assume because before that he just got talked to by like two mods or, or admins who were trying to figure out why he was wearing the skin of that player, that, that NPC. And the whole time they're talking to him, he's like, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't get it. I, I Trust me, if I could help you, I would. If I can do what you wanted. And and uh, it was a really cool, that was a really cool scene. I forgot, like, he got some jump boots or something. No, it, it was those shoes. Oh, oh, that that's what it was? Okay, okay. It gave him the ability to jump really high three times. That's funny. And the last one, he jumped like, he's like too high, too. High. He went really high. And one of the one of the mods, one was one of the mods was or the admins was a guy that the one of the guys that coded the game, or coded the original AI. And then the other one was like this uh, this other guy who's kind of a suck up to the boss. And and yeah. it, what I thought was funny is that he was dressed up like a bunny rabbit. <laughs> so you have this guy. Oh uh, yeah, a bunny, or or not a bunny, a rabbit. One what was one or the other, and uh, he like one of them's dressed. They're both dressed like one's dressed as a cop, and you're like, okay, well that's legit. And then out comes this fucking rabbit, and he's like apex predator. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Pink rabbit. A pink <laughs> rabbit, and it just fits in for something like a game like that. To be honest with you. Um, it, I just couldn't take it serious, that part, that character seriously. But it was part of the, the fun. It was part of what you'd expect. Because, I mean, who hasn't gone into GTA and go, I'm going to dress like an idiot today? You know. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bear outfit that this guy hates on GTA. And why do you hate my bear outfit, Grizz? Because I don't have one. <laughs> so, yeah, he meets he meets with this girl... I forget how they meet again. I think he... Oh, no. He follows her to something and helps her out with a fair, like a mission that she was trying to do that was about trying to 
prove that this guy stole her technology or uh, her coding and uh ends up it ends up to where like they're back at i want to say what, what was supposed to be like a gta style garage right stash house yeah stash house and they're talking and she's like well there's nothing really you can do you're level one and he's like, well, what do you mean? How can I level up? And and uh, she's like, well, you can. You have to do what everyone else does. And he's like, I, I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to do this, that, and the other thing. And she goes, well, you can also be a good person and bo- possibly just take away the guns and, and do whatever, and you'll level up that way. So guess what he ends up doing? Good guy. He's a good guy. And he's making it, you know, it, he's making experience that way. And people are actually, like, he's getting buzzed. Like, you got, you got, like, uh, the show... Shows people like John Septic guy talking about him on YouTube, and it's it was really cool. Like, it was really cool to add stuff like that um, in and talking about like, oh yeah, the, the, that's where he came in as blue shirt guy. This the people yeah. started talking to him and uh, are talking about him. And so, for the girl to take him seriously, he had to get what level hundred. Yeah. So uh, that's what he. That's was- what he was doing. What's that? Because she was level 129. Or something like that. I, I didn't see her level. I think I was cooking while I was watching that part or eating or something. But uh, she, yeah, it was really cool. And then he, he leveled up to the point where, like, and it, he's, and it shows us, like, a little montage of him doing stuff. And at first, of course, he's not doing well. He's getting beat up and all kinds of things. Then he starts kicking ass and he starts doing stuff like he's moving almost like Matrix style, avoiding attacks and just being a really badass, uh, being really a badass about doing things. And, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I got to give Ryan Reynolds some credit, like for someone who can play a badass and be a badass on camera, he can also play someone who's just utterly like clueless and, and utterly like just kind of kind of dorky and nerdy i don't know if you noticed his character like his his physique kind of changed too uh, as he leveled up he looked like he got a little buffer i think they even mentioned that a little bit um i mean it wasn't it wasn't like the other character we learn we find out later on dude <laughs> guy was fucking ridiculous <laughs> it was, which that was hilarious um the you know did did you catch the reference to that? No, well, go ahead and tell me. Okay, with how big dude was, and guy's reaction to dude when he first saw him, same reaction as Deadpool's reaction to Juggernaut. I didn't drink. I didn't read. Yeah, I didn't catch that. That's. That's a good catch. The fact that he had bleached hair, just like Juggernaut. That's true. And it was about the damn size as Juggernaut. And, then, and the reason, the reason that dude existed, was that they were making a sequel to the game, and they were going to put him in as a character because because guy got so popular, and so dude is basically a bigger buffer version of guy, uh, but they didn't. Oh. What's that? Just a lot stupider. Well, they didn't. They didn't fix this. They did never change. They never finished this coding. They they actually brought in dude to stop guy at one point uh, because guy was was getting ready to uncover the truth, which was uh, the fact that the 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 whole the whole game was basically ripped off from the original two coders, which uh, he ends up doing. But go on. What? Tell me about some of your favorite parts, Grizz, since we we briefly went over some of the story. Some of my favorite parts. One of my favorite ones is whenever he gathered, whenever Guy and Molotov Girl, Molly. Yeah. They gather all of the NPCs in that little park right there by the bay. The barista goes, you know. Sometimes I just want to make a goddamn fucking cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, dude, it started. It started with you know what I'd like to do or something like that. And tell me if I'm wrong, if you remember it differently or I'm wrong. But I think he goes, he goes, I would like to. And then guy interrupts to make a cappuccino. She says, no, make a difference in the world or something like that, right? <laughs> like she, her, her, 
It was fucking great. And then there was the one guy that just had his hands up all the time. His hand, he's like, he was always getting, he was always getting robbed. And he's just, he's like, like you can take, you can take your hands down. He's like, well, that's just, that's just, I, that's, that's a pain. I don't want to do that. And he's like. Yeah, he's trying so hard, and his hands go boing right up. Uh, one of my favorite scenes is when a little after they bring in Dude to a, to to stop Ryan Reynolds' character, uh, when he puts the glasses on him, and Dude just kind of frolics off, and he goes, "Go better me," you know, or, or he says something, "Go, go get him better me," or something like that. But he says the the fact that he says "better me" it cracks me the fuck up. Go get him, better me, or, or go go be free, better me, or something like that. And just it's how he said it was fucking great. And of course, I already priorly mentioned the fact that uh, Chris Evans made an appearance, and that that part cracked me up too. Where uh, he's fighting, dude, and dude throws a punch like it's like a death blow, as they called it, and uh, and and guy blocks it with the fucking Captain America shield. And I'm like, oh god, no wonder this is on Disney Plus. <laughs> it made sense i mean they, they brought in everything from like a hulk arm the captain america shield to even like a lightsaber which was fucking cool yeah. a lot of really cool references which the lightsaber turned into a like a hammer with the head of a unicorn which that had some deadpool vibes well that um is a hammer from fortnite oh is it okay I know they were doing some of the dances and stuff from the games too, and the and during the uh, credits. One of my favorite parts was right towards the end, so partway through the the movie, the main coder from the original game is talking with his old partner, who is suing the guy who owns the the company that made free city yeah because he pulled their coding and put it in the game and she was trying to get evidence that he had done so her partner that worked there sent her all these files and was kind of explaining he had coded guy well she never bothered watching the entire file and she kind of fell in love with Guy in the game and made out with him. And Yeah, I like that him. scene, too. He kissed me. Well, there's not a button for that. Oh, he found the button. <laughs> <laughs> she finally watches the whole thing as he was, like, trying to flirt with her. and Yeah, he was asking her out for a cappuccino, I believe, or something like that. Asking her out for coffee. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I'm going to get back to the game. But if you want to go get me one, mm. and so he goes to get one. Well, she finishes watching file and realizes it's not guy that she's in love with. It's yeah, partner. what's her partner in the? But the video had actually said something along the lines that I coded the guy after someone that was that that that, that was heartbroken because he couldn't get the perfect girl that that. Uh, he couldn't find that perfect one for him. And he said, I, 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 I coded it. I coded the guy to want the person that likes, you know, uh, Mariah Carey, a specific Mariah Carey song that likes, uh, likes bubble going bubblegum ice cream, that likes swinging that you've all find out she likes throughout the game or throughout the, the, the show. And he says, I, I actually coded him after myself because I never felt I could get you. You know, he said something along those lines and, and that that actually that hit a that hit a fucking note with me. I was like, oh man, like that's the typical typical nerd that just striving for for what he feels like he can't get. And she it, it, it hit her. She went out and like she went out and stopped him. And I guess they had their first date after that. But that was a really good moment. I agree with you. It's a love story with action vibes and like throwbacks to games that you love. An action packed rom com. Yes. Yes, and it's and it's not just it's a romantic comedy that even guys could get into. Like, it's not one of those ones that your girlfriend's gonna drag you to, and you're like, God damn it, shoot me. <laughs> it's 
It's one that because you're gonna see you're gonna see things that like you can relate to. You're gonna see things that even if you can't relate to, you can at least kind of feel uh, something for. Now it's honestly as far as like uh, one out of ten for me, it's like a nine. Oh, definitely. I uh, especially especially the scene where he's. They're they're all fighting to get like this information out. They're all fighting to get the proof that this guy that the uh, the asshole guy stole all the coding and it didn't even go. That guy even goes out of his way to start like destroying the servers, doing things that like you shouldn't do in a video game to to your customers as a as a developer. He was like shutting down the servers and people were still watching like on the stream. They were streaming the game as he was doing it, as a uh, as guy was trying to trying to do what he did and people were watching this. They were just watching the NPC, which was really cool. And and this whole time in the background, he's like, you know, the 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 bad guy, the the bad guy's destroying his servers to shut everything down. Um, because he didn't, he had stole the coding to get out. Yeah, he 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 was he stupidly left some proof in the game. He left like the original world there, and he forgot what it, the original I thing that that started that is he forgot to take out like. The uh, the reflection in the blinds in the blinds and guy yeah because guy would constantly open and shut his blinds I mean he even went his, went out of his way and we're, we're forgetting this completely uh, the the bad guy even went out of his way to reset the server to kind of reset guy's memory and uh, which got fixed with a kiss which I mean if you think about it, it's kind of goofy but at the same time it, for the story benefit it turned out fine it was kind of cool yeah maybe. Maybe in Grand Theft Auto, you're going to find that one character that you've punched way too many times. Trevor's going to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it's not Trevor. Holy shit. If it was Trevor, we'd be in trouble. It's a good show. I was, I, I'm gonna, I said it before, I'll say it again. Go out and watch it if you have a chance. I mean, it, I've talked to people that don't really see it the way I do. They see it like they said, oh, it's good. It's not amazing. In my opinion, it's amazing. I think... I think uh, oh. I, yeah, I, I think I think Ryan Reynolds is fucking amazing in that show. I think that everyone did a good job. I there's not one one actor that I was like, oh, even the bad guy, even the guy that played the bad guy. Uh, I mean, there was I I literally laughed out loud through most of the movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So definitely check it out. I and those of you who have seen it in the theaters, I'm glad I got to see it on Disney Plus in the comfort of my own home and I'm glad that we get to do a podcast on it now. Is there anything else you want to talk about as far as that goes, Chris? I would definitely give that one a nine. Nine. So you got two nines from us, but go see it. Let us know what you think. And if you want us to talk about something or review something, you can give us a call. There's a number for that. Again, that number is 559-997-6803. Leave us a message. Give us a call. Let us know what you want to Watch, review, play, eat, what have you. We do a lot of shit now. It's not just podcasts. We do video games, we do live streams, we do we, we do food reviews. Uh, you, you guys will see me on Saturday eating ramen or whatever else I put in my mouth hole for reviews. Uh, which I... What's that? <laughs> Was that a dick joke, you sick fuck? I think I'm turning Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I think I really think so. I really think so. But uh, yeah, guys, definitely give us a shout out if you want to, if you want us to do something. Uh, podcast season's coming to an end. We're two episodes away from the last episode, the last episode of the season, which will be 160. I guess that'll end the podcast, guys. We thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Until then, till next week, when you see our beautiful faces again or hear our beautiful voices, stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always. Oh.